Hello there. I'm Haley Stewart, the managing editor of Word on Fire Spark, and I am so excited to be joined by Rachel Bullman. Rachel is a mom of six, a writer, a speaker, her family. You might recognize them from the show Meet the Bullmans from the Word on Fire Institute. And Rachel is also the editor of a brand new book from Word on Fire Publishing called With All Her Mind, A Call to the Intellectual Life. So thanks so much for being here, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you. Well, I'm jealous because you already have a copy of the book and I'm I still do. waiting on my, there it is, there it is. It's so exciting. I'm just eagerly waiting for mine to arrive in my mailbox. But let's get started talking about, um, you know, I mentioned you have six kids. I think it's important yes. for people to know that two of those, your youngest, are twins and they're yes. just, are they one year old yet? Yeah, they're 15 months old now. So they keep me on my toes. Old. Yeah, so clearly you're you're a busy woman. Yeah. So what inspired you to edit this book? What made you think this book really needs to exist? Well, you know, I mean, raising out of our six kids, three of half of them are girls. And so I was just thinking about what is something that I would love to be able to speak to them about and what do I want them to know comes from their mother's heart. And so one of the greatest things for me when I became Catholic was learning about the depth and the beauty of the church. And, you know, growing up evangelical, you kind of had to look deep to find what exactly were the tenets and the beliefs of, of that religion. And as I went on and as I became Catholic, I mean, everything, you could just go to the Vatican website and everything that is there. You could pick up the catechism and everything they believe is there. And I just remember being so enthralled and not being able to read fast enough not being able to to click fast enough to learn everything that the church has to teach us. And I really wanted my girls to know that they're going to be learning forever and that the intellectual life is something that's for them, that no matter what we we try to, to pigeonhole women in, that we have to be in this place at this time. And these are the only things that we can do or the only thing that we can talk about is your heart. Really, we can talk about your heart and we can talk about your mind. And I really wanted my girls to, to have minds that are going to be full and alive and something that they're going to always want to feed just as much as their heart. I love that. And I love the title, the final title with all her mind, because it makes me think, it reminds me that that is one of the ways we're supposed to worship God, you know, yes. with all of our minds. And this is a piece of who we are, who he's created us as human beings. So maybe we could start out um, talking about what is the intellectual life? What do we mean when we say that? Yeah, I think when I first heard that, that term was reading the book, it's by Sir Talangis, and it's, it's, based, it's called An Intellectual Life. And when I was reading that book, it was really pigeonholed into like an, a life of academia and study and, and really geared towards this high, critical, dense thinking which is beautiful and I enjoy that kind of thinking as well. But I think it needs to be broadened that the intellectual life is really any time that you're, you're spending time in thought, any time that you're really letting something take up space in your mind. And so the intellectual life is really just this yearning to learn. And whether that's a yearning to learn something didactic or if it's a, learning to, a, a yearning to learn something about the emotional life, about psychology, everything really finds its place through your mind. And so to really engage it and to be intentional about it, that's a call that we all have to answer. That's a great answer to that question. I think it's so important to see this as part of who we are as human beings, not just for scholars or academics that can be one way to manifest the intellectual life, to live it out. But that there are lots of people who maybe aren't scholars, but you can still be part of the intellectual life. You can still worship God with your mind in this right. way by, by learning. Um, and one of the other terms that is a huge theme of your book is the feminine genius. So can you share a little bit about what does that mean, the feminine genius? 
Sure. So the feminine genius is from a the letter to women that John Paul II put out in the 90s. And he just ended up saying that, you know, the, the blessed mother carries for us this archetype of, of the feminine genius. And we, I think we kind of all latched on to that. As Catholic women, we're like, feminine genius is such a great word. Obviously, I'm feminine and dumb, I'm a genius. So it makes sense that we would put this <laughs> together. But over the years, as we've kind of decided to kind of unpack what the feminine genius looks like, a lot of it has been very concentrated on the emotional life of the woman, the spiritual life of the woman, and not really pulling back the curtain on how both of those elements of being a human person, of being a woman, then also tie into the intellectual life. And so I really wanted that to be expounded upon for us to unfold it even more. That's a great, Edith Stein loved using that language of unfolding. And so to be able to unfold who we are even more and bring in intellectual life along with our heart and our emotional life. I love that. And I think that's so needed. I think you're also a child of the nineties, right, Rachel? Yes, I am. (laughs) So growing up, you know, I was born in 85 and growing up in the nineties, I didn't become Catholic until after I graduated from college. So I just grew up in um, Protestant Christian culture and Christian media. And there was a very Mm. narrow box for what femininity meant and what it meant to live out your femininity and what that role would look like. And so when I converted and I got to know St. Hildegard of Bingen and, you know, these doctors of the church and this yes. intellectual tradition and really seeing in the communion of saints, how many different ways women can live out their calling to love God in the world. Just so many different ways and seeing that the box that I had been trying to fit into that never really fit me well. Right. It didn't really exist. You know, when I became Catholic, it didn't exist anymore. And it was so exciting and freeing. And yet I think that a lot of Christian media still, you know, that was the nineties, but there there hasn't been a lot of movement towards um, expanding our, our thinking about the intellectual life for women and, and the feminine genius and the variety of ways that women bring their gifts to the world. And so that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this book, because I yes. think it's something that's kind of, it isn't talked about as much as we talk about the intellectual life for men. Correct. I completely agree. And especially, you know, I think when we talk about it for men, it seems like such a natural thing because intellectual life is, is of course, based on something outside of yourself that then you bring into yourself. You're incarnating a reality that you're reading in a book or you're learning from a talk. And for men, that's just the natural ethos, right? You're, they're usually, especially put outside of the home, you're doing something external from yourself, you're working. And, and for women, especially in the nineties and especially growing up and, and learning about what the feminine priority is and the feminine priority is is inward the feminine priority is based in the heart you're the heart of the home you're doing all of these things and but all of those things are usually based just on care for other people and while that's good and beautiful it has to be put in that in that proper order of the fullness of the person which means mind body soul spirit and one cannot be excluded because if you don't have one, then the whole thing is off balance. Your emotional life has to be informed by your thought life. And we see that right now in our climate, right? You can't have a debate right now because we can't rationalize our thought with our emotional life. And so one, if if you do that, the train just kind of runs off the tracks. And so we have to be able to engage this intellectual life so that we can engage this balanced understanding of who we are so that we can live life to the fullest. Yeah, that that is wonderful. And do you want to just share with people watching what are who are some of the contributors? What are some of the topics that you dive into? And I I love thinking about okay, were you pregnant with the twins when you started oh this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was or totally pregnant. I was yes, you were pregnant yes. with the twins. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we started talking about life. this during the pregnancy <laughs> about the book and then I was putting together the list of of just just some top notch writers and thinkers that have inspired me Haley is one of those and that I really wanted their thought on the intellectual life to be something that can be handed down for generations you know and 
then whenever we we started to work on the book and the essay started to come in, I'm sitting there a lot of times editing late into the night, you know, in between feedings or in between a baby might wake up in two hours, they might wake up together. So it was it was quite an exciting time <laughs> of editing this book. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have thought it was important enough to tackle oh my gosh. during a twin pregnancy. I really can't yes. explain it. My husband was laughing at me. He's like, he goes, so how many have you done today? And I was like, oh, not that many. I keep falling asleep. I'd get like one page in. I was like, all right, I got to go take a nap now. So, so it was it was a long, arduous, but fruitful and beautiful, you know, <laughs> journey for this book to come into fruition. But some of the other, you know, Haley, you have your essay in here about becoming a bibliophile. Man, if you are even thinking about when you read and you see, if you follow Haley, you know that Haley likes to read books and Haley likes to read books. And I live vicariously through the books that Haley <laughs> writes and the books that she reads. And I'm like, man, I need to be a book lover like Haley. <laughs> Haley could tell us how to do that. And some of the things, the illustrations that you use in here about just how books are alive and they provide communion across the world for people. This is just, I think, going to change the landscape for people to understand why they love books. Because that's something else when you're in like a cafe and somebody's like, yeah, I read that book too. I mean, it brings up this whole other world that you get to enter into together. Really beautiful. Um, so thank you for writing that. And Absolutely. then we have Sister Miriam James in here, um, Sister Josephine as well. And Emily Simpson Chapman, and all of them really draw in on their own vocation. Some of them are mothers. Some of them are academics. Some of them are also religious sisters. And so they're going through and they're saying, this is how the intellectual life informed me and who I am as a woman, and also in my vocation, how it's lived out. And so they, they really kind of dive into everything that you would hope would be talked about as we're talking about intellectual life and women. I love it. Um, I can't wait because I haven't got to read everyone's yet. It's I haven't so got to read good. everyone's <laughs> essays yet. So I can't wait. And um, so if you were sitting down with another woman, yes. what would you tell her about why this book is important, why she should tackle this book? You know, as a Catholic woman, of course, and we always think about the Blessed Mother as being, you know, the one that we, we try to emulate, that everything that we do, we're really trying to emulate everything that she is. This woman who was both virgin and mother, all of the things that women can be, we can see within the life of the Blessed Mother. And I really love that the Church Fathers called her our Lady Seat of Wisdom. And seat, of course, is somewhere where you find rest. And then wisdom, of course, is something that we're all seeking. And I think that as a Catholic woman who then wants to establish this relationship and grow in a relationship with the Blessed Mother, it's such a great thing for you to realize that you can sit in that seat, you can find rest, and you can become wise there. You can exercise your intellectual life. And that's part of becoming more and more like our Blessed Mother, becoming fuller and more alive as a woman, and becoming a more glorious human person. And of course, we know that the glory of God is man fully alive. And so I would pick it up and I would pick it up for every woman that you know. I think it's going to be a great gift for young women in the world for them to know that you have the right to think and you have the right to think deeply and beautifully. And the church offers a lot of doorways for you to enter to, into to do that. I love that. I love that um, illustration of doorways or that image of doorways. And there's many different doorways. I mean, from your personal life, you're showing mm -hmm. I'm editing books while I'm pregnant with twins. You know, there right. are many different doorways to be engaging and growing in the intellectual life and and in that growing in, in your worship of God. You know, the yes. more that we learn mm -hmm. and are just experiencing wonder and awe um, with the intellectual life and with these ideas, that's part of the way that we worship God and, and know him better. And so I love that even the writing and editing work on this book is lived out 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> pregnancy is just like such a perfect example of yes. there is such a variety in ways that this can be lived out um, in women's lives. So wonderful. And anyone watching, you can find this book with all her mind, A Call to the Intellectual Life from Word on Fire Publishing. You can go to wordonfire.org slash with all her mind and order your copy. Thanks yes. so much for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much, Haley. And take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.